Hey Merfolk fans, I'm Joe. Thanks very much for joining me today. If you'd like to support my channel, please check out the link above to my Patreon page. I'm back with the last few uh, matchups for my sideboarding guide with the Benthic Biomancer Wizard's Retort build. Uh, so let's go ahead and check out Affinity. So this is the classic version of Affinity. It's interesting to see it here in the, you know, the top 15 decks in the format. But, you know, uh, MTG Goldfish uh, is updated pretty regularly, so I think it's pretty legit. I actually saw this deck online uh, for the first time in a while uh, recently. So you guys should be pretty familiar with this with this list. It runs, you know, the, the man lands between Ink Moth and Plink Moth. Uh, it's trying to uh, get in with, with a big cranial plating. They're going to bring in against us... Uh, Girapur Ether Grid for sure, and um, yeah, probably not too much else because you know they, they have such a strong matchup against us to begin with. So um, I'm sorry if you guys can hear that. I think somebody's drilling outside, but I think we can uh, can just keep going. So what do we do against Affinity? We're definitely keeping our C's for those man lands. The retorts might be too slow, but might be a good way to potentially deal with. Um, a cranial plating or you know some other big threat like uh, do they have etched champions in here they have a singleton and three more in the side which uh, in this particular list these guys would definitely come in against us because they're looking to you know push past our blue creatures and my, my list actually doesn't have a lot of mutavaults so um, mutavaults one of our ways where we can actually block etched champion so a little bit weaker unfortunately uh, keep the C's. Not sure about retorts. Definitely keeping in the Echoing Truth. Uh, definitely keeping in the Interactive Creatures. Lords for Island Walk. Master of Waves is a little bit slow. Uh, and Click is going to be good as a flyer. So we can start off at the very least by... Well, let's go ahead and look at our sideboard. What are we bringing in? Two Dismembers. So that goes over here. Dispel, Dismember... Venser is too slow. Vendillion Click is very good. And Echoing Truth is pretty good. So in this matchup, you know, we, we kind of need things to really go our way. Uh, we really, really want to have Aether Vial and <laughs> and we just want them to not have the nuts. So if we bring in those four cards, kind of a modest adjustment. We don't have too much else we can do against these guys. We would then want to take out, you know, I think we kind of have to play a bit of our of our normal strategy against him. We can't, I think, afford to take out all of the counter spells. I think we have to hope to have turn one Ben, turn two retort, and, and just hang on for dear life, basically. We can certainly cut some number of Master of Waves, but if we can make the game uh, go a bit longer uh, by hopefully drawing into some tricksters or echoing truths. Landing a Master of Waves is one of the ways that we can actually uh, win. So I'm inclined to not cut all of the Master of Waves. We don't have to cut too much, actually. I think I would cut two Master of Waves and two Retorts here. You know, you could go either way. You could just cut all four Master of Waves or cut all four retorts. But retort gives us some early game interaction. Master Wave gives us some late game, you know, winning potential. So they're both clunky. So for me, the, it seems to be reasonable to just trim back on both of them. But we don't have, you know, slam dunks against Affinity. We're not running Hercules Recall right now. The best we can do is bring in a couple of removal spells, another bounce spell, Keep in our spreading seas, keep in our interactive creatures, and you know, cross our fingers. The plan's going to be pretty similar against Hardened Scales Affinity. It's pretty interesting to see these guys next to each other like this. Um, this guy has 2.4% of the meta. This is also 2.4% of the meta. So combined, if we look at Affinity, it's probably actually closer to... Wow, we are closer to th like fourth place on this list. So possible that I am slightly underprepared for this matchup. I had been running Hercules recalls for, you know, one one or two leagues, but it just felt too narrow given that um, 
we don't really have um, KCI in the field, though people have been seeing these um, War of Invention decks a lot. And if that deck becomes more popular, then, Her then uh, Hercules Recall can definitely find its way back into our sideboard. So I don't know that there's a lot we're going to be doing differently here. Um, they do have Hangerback Walkers, uh, which we really need to counter. And so I think that the strategy is basically bring in the same cards, but we're going in this case to just cut all the Master of Waves because they're so weak to Walking Ballista. And we're going to leave in all of our um, Wizards Retorts because we want our best chance uh, at countering the Walking Ballista when the time comes. Uh, there's nothing else really that I think we need in the matchup. They don't have, I think, a ton out of the sideboard uh, that hates against us. They bring in some Dismembers, but we're taking out the Master of Waves, and so Dismember is a nice trade for any of our two drops. <clears throat> Nature's Claim can be good against our Aether Vials, so you have to look out for that. I actually spent a counter spell stopping a Nature's Claim against these guys, and I won that game, so... Um, they bring in some number of these against us, probably not four. We're not like a Tron deck. So the plan against these guys is basically just stop the, hang the, um, the Walking Ballista. If you can do that, you've got a pretty good chance. You know, they might load up on an Arcbound Ravager and try to dump everything onto Ink Moth Nexus, but then you can hit it with a Merfolk Trickster, and then the following turn put a Spreading Seas. We've got game against that kind of a strategy. Uh, unfortunately, we don't really have much against um, Walking Ballista except for uh, Dismember and and Counter Spells. So, four Master of Waves out. We're going to bring in that click to hopefully grab the Walking Ballista out of their hand. It is weak to Walking Ballista, so you know we're we're walking a um, a thin line there on you know good versus bad. But I think we come down on the side of good uh, with click. All right, so. Don't think I'm missing any glaring thing. Um, clearly, Harbinger and Trickster are going to be solid in the matchup. Going to hope to get through with some Island Walk. Hopefully uh, buff our creature's toughness as well with our Lords to make Walking Ballista as in a, ineffective as possible. All right, so slightly different plans for Affinity versus Hardened Scales Affinity. Um, continuing now, we'll get into the last couple matchups. Uh, here we have Rock, and then we'll, we'll finish up with Jeskai. So Rock is going to be pretty similar to uh, the matchup against Jund, but um, a couple of big differences are uh, because their mana base is much smoother than Jund's, they can afford to run three or I think even sometimes four Fields of Ruin, uh, which means that our mana base is better set up to sort of just naturally fight this deck because they can uh, get screwed on Field of Ruins if we just run Basic Islands. You can see they don't run Choke, Nobody runs Choke, so you shouldn't really be afraid of that. Uh, they run Tireless Tracker, whereas I guess most Jund lists, including the Jund list I showed you previously, uh, doesn't run Tireless Tracker. This is the card that I'm most afraid of in this matchup. Because they have so many lands, and they have so many fetch lands, that if they are crackling, so it's like Verdant Catacombs, and then uh, Field of Ruins, so many lands where they're getting two triggers off of Tireless Tracker, and this guy can just draw way too many cards. So by himself, not really a threat, but the fact that he draws him so many cards is really scary. They've got the full four Assassin's Trophies, uh, which means, you know, Master of Waves uh, is pretty vulnerable. They've got the four Fatal Push. Again, decent against Master of Waves. They've got two Brutalities to bring in, uh, Bantu's Last Reckoning. Let's see, what else? Liliana, The Last Hope, Maelstrom Pulse, Damnation. They've got a lot of good sideboard hate against us. So let's, let's give it a think like, about what we want to do against them. Uh, clearly, Scavenging Ooze and Dark Confidant care a great deal about the graveyard. So bringing in Relics seems kind of a no-brainer. Yeah, just, just thinking about other effects that, that Relic is good against. But it's, it's good against uh, you know, six, of, six of their 14 threats, so I like bringing in the four Relics. Also, some of these decks will run Grim Flare, um, in which case, obviously, uh, Relic is going to be even better. 
three tide binders is one of the big reasons that I added uh, those guys. Tide binder, uh, really good against 10 of their 14 creatures. Not great against Dark Confidant, but we are going to bring in uh, the two dismembers. For the same reason as against Jund, I'm not going to bring in the Venser because it's slow and they're just going to replay their thing, right? So uh, leave thoughts uh, in the comments down below if you disagree with my reasoning on Venser. But it, it just seems like it doesn't do a great deal against Jund. Yeah, we could bounce one of our creatures in response to removal, I guess. I could see that as an argument. But many times, you know, we might get stuck on three lands and... I uh, don't want Venser in hand in those situations, um, or in many situations. I don't know. Bouncing a Tarmogoyf can be good in a clutch sort of um, situation where we're racing uh, to lethal. But uh, in many circumstances, you're just going to bounce their creature, and they'll just replay it. So two dismembers. Uh, I do like click in the matchup. And it can peel out, you know, like um, Bantu's Last Reckoning, or Liliana the Last Hope, or a Maelstrom Pulse. Or anything that we don't want them to have. A tireless tracker, Liliana the Veil even, engineered explosives. Uh, click, click is just high value and seems pretty easy to justify bringing it in. Uh, on the other side of things, I think that truth is an easy cut um, because the bounce logic that I've, that I've laid out. Uh, going to continue to follow um, Nikachu's plan against midrange and leave in three ether vials. The way that I lose to the mid-range decks most often is just getting land screwed. And Aether Vial is a way to, you know, actually open our game up and play Magic. I uh, actually won a really long, drawn-out game in the match that I uploaded recently against uh, Black, Green, Black Green Rock, and the only thing that let me do it was uh, Aether Vial. So if I look here, we're going to find this um, minus one uh, uh, island, minus one vial. Oh, sorry, I put that in the wrong spot. Put it over here. What was that? Okay, so we can take out an island and vial. That's an easy start. I think I'm going to take out all four retorts. Um, retorts get worse against um, against mid range because first of all, we're taking out some number of vials, and our counter spells are the best when we have an ether vial on the deck, on the board. I guess I should say. If we have an Aether Vial on the board, uh, we can hold up mana all day and just counter whatever the opponent plays. But um, against Jund, in particular, and, and Rock, they have um, counter spells which will show them um, the cards that we have in hand, and they can play around our counter spells as they see fit. If they want to take the counter spell out of our hand, they can do that. So I think it's, it's a pretty easy choice to just cut the four retorts. Again, I'm really, really interested to know what you guys think about this. Um, I think I'm going to cut... Now, I forgot to mention with Harbinger, um, it's, not, it's particularly um, not amazing against Jund because they have the Bloodbraid Elves, and bouncing those to their hand is not great at all because they get another Cascade Trigger. Uh, against Rock, you know, it's also not great because what does bouncing a Tireless Tracker do? It gains us a little bit of time, I guess, but... Um, it's essentially just a 2-2 bear, and we're replacing it with, with Tidebinder Mages, so easy swap. So let's see how this lines up against... Um, it looks like the same plan bringing in for Jund, and so far very similar to what we're taking out and bringing in against Rock. Let's do, so it's uh, 10, 10 in here, 7, 8, 9, 10, and it looks like nine so far and i guess we'll go ahead and cut that single ben uh you know because a one drop is a one drop at the end of the day uh even if it uh loots and after paying the two mana uh it's going to be better just to have tricksters that can potentially eat a goif or or slow their attacks down uh it's going to be better to have lords if we have spreading seas down and just close the game out even though uh, Master of Waves is weak in the matchup because of, um, or relatively weak in the matchup because of the type of removal they're playing, 
it seems correct to me to leave in all four Master of Waves against them, because if they don't have one of those cards to deal with him, or if they spent all this removal on another creature that was threatening them, Master of Waves can just win the game right away. But this is a point that um, I could be convinced on. Um, is it possible that we should board out our Master of Waves uh, against four Assassin's Trophies and four Fatal Pushes? I'm not sure. I tend to think that, you know, it's it's a bomb in the matchup, but looking at that lineup, it, it could be wrong. It's possible that we should just trim some number of Master of Waves, leave in the more tempo-based creatures like Harbingers, and try to win the game a little bit uh, a little bit faster. Try to slow down the opponent and just play the tempo game. But um, it seems much more likely that Master of Waves is going to have a bigger impact. All right, so that, that rounds out Rock. It's exactly the same strategy as against Jund. Uh, again, following that Nikachu strategy of sideboarding out a vial and an island, leaving in three vials, which goes against um, the traditional approach of taking out all of our vials since they're bad top decks. Uh, because we want to be able to play magic, and Aether Vial tends to be the best card that you know enables that, uh, if they use a removal spell against Aether Vial, uh, that just means it's you know one less creature, hopefully, that they're using you know an Assassin's Trophy on or something like that. Uh, Okay, so let's go ahead to, I think, our last matchup for this uh, sideboarding series with Jeskai. So Jeskai, a little different off the bat than um, Blue-White. We can see that they run four Snapcaster Mages and two Celestial Colonies. No, two Search for Azkantas. So leaning a little bit more heavily uh, on the Graveyard than Blue-White Control. Uh, looks like I chose not to bring in any relics uh, in this matchup in blue-white. Why don't I go ahead and open up uh, blue-white also? Might be interesting to have these side by side if we want to compare and contrast. So blue-white, um, the only things it had that dealt with the graveyard was two snapcasters and a single search for Ascanta. They have stony silence, which can potentially shut off our relics if we bring them in, so um, the idea of not bringing in relics at all seems reasonable, since they, we're not going to get too much value uh, preventing uh, them from using the graveyard as a resource, uh, and we could potentially play uh, better around a Stony Silence if they happen to land one post-board. Uh, versus Jeskai, though, they have about double the amount of stuff that uses the sideboard. I mean, sorry, uses the graveyard. Uh, if we look at their sideboard over here... Um, they don't have Stony Silence, so Aether Vial is going to be extra good. Ceremonious, Surgical. Um, did these guys have any um, Settle the Wreckages? I don't, I don't see any. They do have uh, the Angel Package here, uh, tri Trickster will be decent against. Uh, they have the Lightning Helixes. Uh, versus blue-white that doesn't have access to that. So against Jeskai, we are going to want the relics. No tide binders. definitely want the Dispels. Uh, definitely want the Vencers. Scar these guys are running Teferi. They're running two Supreme Verdicts. Um, they're not running Terminus. So... Let's bring in the Venser. It's really good against uh, Supreme Verdict. I'll Dispel and Venser, I guess. And no Dismembers. Um, definitely the click. And we'll leave the, the single Echoing Truth as we did with Blue-White. So it's the same as Blue-White but we're adding four Relic of Progenitus. So what are we going to take out? Uh, clearly, uh, Spreading Sea is going to be a little bit better in this matchup than against Blue-White because they need um, three colors, right? So they're going to have... Um, let's see. They're going to have Steam Vents and... They should have some number of... I guess they don't have Sacred Foundry because they're primarily just a blue-red deck. So they're going to have a single Mountains and two Steam Vents and a Sulphur Falls. Um, yeah, so we can take them off of their red, hopefully. 
or at least slow them down on it. Uh, they only have two celestial colonnades, but they do have this two search for Ascantas. So having access to two spreading seas does seem decent, especially since the idea right now is that I want to test uh, spreading seas against these blue-based control decks. Uh, since since people seem to have been doing well with that strategy, I'm very interested in testing it out. So if we look at what we did against blue-white control, uh, we took out these five cards, but then we'll need to take out four other cards. Ether Vial, uh, clearly not coming out. Against their four cryptics, uh, spell snares, logic knots, monoleaks, etc. Et uh, you know, you might think that uh, these decks take out all of their counter magic against us, but they don't. If if you don't have an Ether Vial, they're going to be countering a bunch of your creatures. So Ether Vial, I think, is great against against these decks. Uh, if you if you disagree, please let me know uh, and and let me know why you think that. We can have a discussion. Uh, the retorts are definitely staying. I like the Singleton Echoing Truth. Let's double check what what these guys are doing that can uh, get bounced with Echoing Truth. So they don't have Detention Sphere uh, to bounce, but of course we can always protect our creatures with Echoing Truth. Uh, we can bounce it to Fairy and then counter it. Um, you know what? Let's see. These guys have a lot more Planeswalkers um, that we can bounce with um, Echoing Truth. They also don't have uh, the Detention Sphere that we can bounce. So, yeah, I don't know. Echoing Truth seems a little bit worse uh, in, in this matchup, so I'm going to take that Echoing Truth out. And then uh, what else can we do? They do have a couple more creatures with Vendillion Click. Uh, Azorius, that is. Um, well, same, same number of creatures. These guys are just all on the ground with the Snapcaster. Just trying to think about how good you know, Trickster is. I like Ben uh, because the games go really long and they also do early damage. So um, really good in the early game, really good in the late game. So no reason to sideboard them out. Sorry for this noise. I don't know what, somebody's drilling like right outside my apartment. Uh, so taking out the Harbingers, taking out the Lords, taking out the, mm, one Lord, Master of Waves. How about, um, do these guys have timely reinforcements to get more blockers on the board? Oh, it doesn't look like it. So... So we might not need as many lords, since uh, we might not really need Island Walk. Master of Waves, click. So if we're gonna, we might not need all four relics in this matchup. It's not like a combo-based graveyard deck. Um, here's Jeskai. So they do have the four Snapcasters and the two Searches. I think we can definitely trim back to at least three relics. I'm going to be very trim about our approach here. Um, Venser seems solid. I don't see any reason to only bring in one or zero of him. So, and Dispel is obviously great. Click is obviously great. So that's five, six, seven, eight, eight cards, and we've currently got uh, six coming out. I think we can definitely trim back on the Lord of Atlantis a little bit. Um, but before we do that, we might want to um, trim back on the Master of the Pearl Trident in case they do happen to be running. That Singleton Detention Sphere or something like that. So we're up to 7, but we'd ideally get up to 8. Um, like Spreading Seas. Important to note also that Spreading Seas uh, can be a bit of a combo with Echoing Truth. Uh, if you want to bounce them, replay them to draw more cards. But it's not, you know, it doesn't come up that often and it's really not that powerful. So um, if we're going to take out the Truth here, uh, it, it makes our Seas a little bit worse, but... Again, they do have three colors, so hopefully the Spreading Seas will do more work. Although, you know what? They don't have... Well, they do have Ascanta. They have two... It's hard to say. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep running some Seas post-board to, to just sort of see how, um, see how it works, since other people seem to have been having some success. What is the last card that we're going to trim? Uh, hmm. I guess... What is just just Kai's answers for um, Master of Waves? Pretty much limited to Path to Exile. They have a, celest a couple Celestial Purges, so oh, but that's only for black or red. Uh, I guess Ruined Halo can protect from the Elementals, but no, they can only name cards. Um, tokens are not cards, so 
That doesn't work. Yeah, Master of Waves seems really good. I'm not going to board any of those guys out. And the Lords push a lot of power. I think I'll just cut one Trickster. I don't know. At the end of the day, you know, it's whether we cut one more Lord or one more Trickster. Um, definitely don't want to cut Ben. As I was saying, um, the ability to just play him on turn one and adapt and keep attacking for two damage just with our one drop while improving the quality of our hand through the loot uh, has been really, really powerful against uh, all the control decks I've seen. So Ben as close to Silvergill as as in any other uh, matchup against the uh, blue-white control against Jeskai. If we can get them to burn a lightning bolt on Benthic Biomancer, that's that's a win for us. Um, all right, so that does it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. The top 15 decks in modern right now. There's your um, sideboarding strategy um, for the deck that I've been playing. Uh, with Benthic, Bi Benthic Biomancer, the Four Wizards Retorts, and this particular sideboard. So, um, as I've said many times by now, um, I'd love it if you guys would share your feedback. Um, I'm sure that there are things that I wasn't thinking about. I'm uh, constantly impressed and surprised by all of the um, suggestions that you guys have uh, for me in the comments. So, do leave your comments down below. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, please be sure to check out my Patreon page if you'd like to support the channel. And yeah, tune in for the next video where I'll probably be back with some more gameplay. I'll see you guys there. Bye.